This is the very first video on the bait making channel. If you guys are brand new, if you guys don't know who I am, my name is Benjamin Nowak. This is the bait making channel and I also have another channel called the Smallmouth Experience. But this is my very first video on this channel sharing with you guys one of my passions and my hobbies, which is bait making. This is something I do a couple times a week, so having an outlet through this channel is going to be really interesting. It's going to let me share kind of my nerdy thoughts about bait making, really nuancy things about baits, modifying baits. All throughout the fall, all throughout the winter into next year, this is something I'm super stoked to talk to you guys about. Now today's video is only fitting that we talk about one of my favorite smallmouth catching this color ever, Mango Magic, which I've gone through a lot of trials and tribulations trying to make. I have like a very green pumpkin version, I have another darker green pumpkin version, I have sort of an off-colored Mango Magic which looks ridiculous, and then another variation on a green pumpkin but i think i found the key ingredient so i want to share that with you guys talk about how to make mango magic so you guys can go out and have success what makes this color so effective and then we're going to go back to the lead pouring station and pour my favorite ned rig head to go with the ned rig bait that we're going to be pouring the mango magic in so there's a lot going on in this video but i hope you guys enjoy i'm going to toss you on the tripod we're going to start pouring some mango magic baits. I'll start off by giving you guys a little bit of a close up of my attempts at mango magic. And, and like I mentioned in the intro, I've not really even gotten close. I've gotten some really cool green pumpkin-ish mango magic sort of colors, which is basically green pumpkin, purple and gold flake. But this is the closest I've gotten. What mango magic truly is, amber base with a little bit of green pumpkin mixed in there, purple and gold flake. And what you're essentially looking for is something that looks like a goby. This is such an effective color because when you get out on the Great Lakes where it's a little bit dirtier, off color water, those gobies get a little bit more amber base and that purple and gold is just a standard goby imitation color. Some cool looking baits, not really what we want. What we're gonna be doing in this video is basically breaking down the true way to make mango magic. We're gonna get the plastic mixed up and start trying to make some mango magic Ned Rig baits. Mix up your plastic. This is do it molds. Plastisol in clear, and that's about a cup, and then we're going to put it in the microwave for about three minutes to get it to 350. Start this thing. While we're waiting on that plastic to finish heating up, the mold we're going to be using today is a Do It Molds 8 cavity Ned Rig mold. You basically have eight cavities, three and a quarter inches long, you have a little bit of a rib section and egg sac, and then you have these little sections on each of the tails with little bulbs or knobs coming off of them. Really cool little Ned Rig baits mold. The plastic that I'm using actually floats, so when you put it on that Ned Rig head, it'll look awesome. It'll help that bait stand up a little bit. But this is the mold that we're gonna be shooting in today. We're gonna be using an eight ounce single injector, and then we're gonna be using a variety of colorants from amber to a little bit of green pumpkin, some purple flake and some gold flake. And that's gonna be basically the necessity of what we need to get this job done. We're at 359 degrees. So this is where we're gonna add our colorant and I'm going to add our glitters. Colorants I'm gonna be using are the Do It Soft Baits colorant. This is the Amber X2 and this is Watermelon Brown. We're gonna start with the Amber, about 15 drops of this, see how it looks and then we might add some Watermelon Brown to give it a little bit more of a greenish base. Then I'm using size 0.4 hex flake. But this light purple actually bleeds through a lot, so you don't want to add too much of the purple flake. We're going to basically just kind of ad lib on this, kind of dump a little bit in, see how it looks, dump a little bit in, and that's kind of the way that I work through this process. First thing I do is obviously I shake up my colorant, but I'm really kind of cautious with the amount of colorant that I use. I don't want my baits to look super, super thick or heavy, so I count out each drop. So that's 15 drops, then I'm going to take my knife, I'm going to stir that in, sort of get that kind of mixed in there, see where we get with color wise, which I want it to be semi see through, I want it to be semi transparent, so I don't want to mix too much of this color in there, and wouldn't, which would basically make it a solid orange, but this is getting pretty close to the color I want. If you guys can see that, I'm going to have to reheat this plastic, but if you guys can see that, it's getting more of that orangish color, which is something I've not been able to get with the colors that I currently have. What we're going to do, like I mentioned, this purple actually tries to start to bleed into the plastic. It really shows through. So I'm going to start by adding the purple 
and I just add it kind of ad lib. I don't measure it out. The purple's also gonna have a really cool effect where it's gonna have a red flash and a little bit of like a, a goldish flash as well, which you might be able to see if I show it to the camera, but it doesn't just look like straight purple. So I don't wanna add too much of the purple and have it overpower this plastic. Just so maybe a little bit more. And that's about the perfect amount of purple flake in there. Cause I still have to add that orange or copper. So when we add a little bit of copper flake, not too much, what you're gonna get is a beautiful orange color, some copper and purple, which shows up basically as purple, red, and copper because that purple sort of changes colors once you put it in that plastic and you get a lot of really cool effects going on with that purple. It's a little bit too orange for what I'm hoping for. So we're gonna add a little bit of watermelon brown, probably just two or three drops. Better shake this up. We'll see what that looks like, that's four drops. And I think that's gonna be perfect. It's just darkening it up a little bit. And what you're getting is more of that mango-esque style color. This is looking probably the best that I've ever gotten. A little bit darker, yellowish orange, purple, and gold flake. Let's put this back in the microwave for another 30 seconds to a minute, check the temperature, and I think we're gonna be ready to start pouring. So there we go. We are at 358 degrees, which is perfect temperature. You have that orange, a little bit of greenish in there, your purple and gold flake, and that is a dang good looking mango magic. So we're gonna draw this thing up and get a couple big shot. So fill this thing up as high as you can. That's the thing about this mold. It takes a lot of plastic. So fill this injector up and just push it in nice and easy. Once you start to get a little resistance, top that mold off and you're good to go. But just looking at the top on that mold, just looking at the way that looks on the top, that's gonna be a very pretty net rig bait. So here we go, moment of truth. Taking this off. And look at how good those baits look. That is a phenomenal mango magic color. A little bit of amber, a little bit of watermelon brown, purple and gold flake. It's not overpowered by the flake. It looks awesome. This is gonna work great anytime you're fishing around perch, a little bit of off-colored water. What I really like is that it's not fully opaque. You can see a little bit of light through there, so it's gonna make this bait really, really shine in that off-colored water. It's a perfect, perfect color. I'm gonna toss those in the water bath. Start on the next one. I'm not gonna remelt the sprues or any of the leftover plastic. So we're only gonna get about three pours out of a cup of plastic. You get eight Nedrig baits per pour. So we're only gonna get about three pours out of this one, just because we're still gonna go back to the lead pouring station to show you guys the Nedrig head that I like to pour. Pour number two, take off our clamps. Perfect, again, look at that little Nedrig bait. You have those little knobs on that side, ribbed edge there. That is a very good looking Mango Magic Nedrig bait. Looks great going in the water bath with the other ones. And because it's an eight cavity pour, you don't have to pour a whole ton of times to get a bunch of baits. We already have 16 baits over there. We're gonna do one more pour, one or two more, and get eight or 16 more Nedrig baits out of one pour. So here we go, we don't have much plastic, so like I mentioned, this is gonna probably be our final pour. I just don't wanna blow a whole bunch of bubbles in this thing. When you don't have much plastic on a big mold like this, you tempt fate by trying to pour too many, and this might be too many. Yeah, it didn't push very clean. That is not gonna be a clean shoot at all. I did not have enough plastic. That's it, we got two and a half pours. I think we melted the remelts. We could get three pours, but with one cup of plastic, two seems like it's about the number with that big of a mold. So let's open up this mold. I know it didn't pour well. You guys can tell there's no real sprue left. 
So what that tells me is I'm going to have a bunch of half empty cavities or they're going to have air bubbles. I mean, straight out, it looks like a poured well, but if you start really looking at the, the baits, this one has a huge air pocket. That one has an air pocket. That one's half poured. So this did not come out well. This one's going to go straight to the remelt bucket because that did not pour well. But I have all the sprues left over. I have basically a handful of plastic left where if I wanted, I could melt it all down and get at least one more pour out of this. That would make... 24 total net rig baits. Now we're going to go back to the lead pouring station, back to my jig station, and pour up some net rig heads to go with our perfect nets. Just like we did with the soft plastics, we're going to start by talking about the components, everything that we're using. Now this mold here is a Do It Molds Midwest Finesse Jig Mold, and this is the assorted sizes. They also have production models, so if you guys want to pour a 16th or an 8th ounce in production model, you can get, I believe, eight cavities or six cavities with just that size. So this is a modified mold, and you're going to understand why I have a modified mold here in a second when I show you guys my all-time favorite Ned Rig hook. But this is the Midwest Finesse Do It Molds Assorted Sizes Ned Rig Midwest Finesse Mold. Now we're going to talk about the various hooks that you can use or that I have tried using in this mold. And the first one is a Mustad... BLN 32746 size 1-0 and 2 out hook. Now the thing about this hook is it is a very light wire hook. It is a smaller diameter wire, so that means if you want a light wire hook that you can basically set the hook without much pressure. It's going to be a great hook to go with, but if you like fishing it on a medium rod, a medium power rod, this hook has a tendency to flex and bend out on you. It's a great hook for hair jigs. This is actually what I like for hair jigs because it doesn't take much pressure at all to penetrate. But that is the Mustad hook. Now this is the hook that is actually recommended with the mold. It is an Owner 5313 size 1-0 hook. This is a very, very premium hook. It's much stiffer wire. You don't have to risk bending the hook out. It's uh, a little bit heavier duty hook. And this is the hook that is recommended with the mold. But I'm going to show you guys my favorite hook to put with the mold. And I'm going to explain why. This is the Gamagatsu 111 size 1 aught or 2 aught jig hook. The reason I like this is you have that O'Shaughnessy bend. So if you look at the bend on that hook where it comes and meets the hook point, it's a little bit different than your standard round bend. I think this keeps those fish pinned a lot better. Dirds and I have talked about it a lot. That O'Shaughnessy bend just seems to keep those fish pinned. It's also a little bit stiffer wire hook. Not as stiff as the owner, but much stiffer than that must add. And I just really like the way this hook fits with your baits and gets those fish pinned. The other big thing is if you really compare it size wise, even though they're both one out hooks, it's a significantly larger hook than that owner hook. You're, you're looking at about an eighth of an inch longer hook shank than that owner hook. And that's what I mean by O'Shaughnessy Ben. The one on the bottom is the uh, Gamagatsu 111 with the O'Shaughnessy. And the one on the top is the Owner 5313 with the standard round bend hook. So this is the hook that I'm going to be pouring with, Gamagatsu 111. We're going to pour probably five of these to show you guys how I like to pour this mold and how I or why I modified this mold to accept that. And we're going to be pouring in the quarter ounce size. I really like a quarter ounce. I know a lot of guys like to go down to smaller sizes when they're fishing a net rig. I just like to fish it faster and having a quarter ounce gets it down there, keeps it on bottom, maintains bottom contact, which for me is the key. First thing I'm going to do is basically make sure that this mold is heated up, make sure it's warm so that we want to go to pour my jig heads through it. I'm not wasting any hooks. And so I'll pour it through without a hook in there. That's just going to heat this mold up. It's going to get it to temperature so that when I go to pour it with the jigs in there, it's going to pour perfectly. Now I'm going to lay my hook in there as well as this little bait keeper, which I believe is a WB400 bait keeper. So now that we've got all the pieces placed, it closes flush. What we're going to do is go in here, pour us a little Ned Rig. So pour it, you're gonna get a little bit over the top. I'm gonna let it settle just for half a second. Then I'm gonna open it up. And what you wanna do is make sure you grab it by the jig head. More than any mold, this is one you're gonna to wanna to grab by the jig head. And the reason for that 
is because otherwise that little bait keeper is going to get jostled free. If you wiggle it back and forth by the sprue, you're going to have an issue with that jig head getting wobble free and you're going to get really frustrated when that jig head's loose on the hook. So that's number one. It looks pretty dang good. We'll clean this up here in a second and I'll show you guys the finished product. Let's run four more. Bait keeper and 111 are in there. Is that perfect? Put it underneath. Pour your lead in. Number three. Shake to settle. She comes out looking perfect. Number four. Shake. Uh, look at how perfect that looks. That is a perfect net head. And the last pour for number five. Is that easy right there number five is poured number five is perfect and beautiful and that thing is a great Ned right there now that we have our five Ned rigs poured the one thing you're gonna to want to make sure you do is use a sprue cutter as I mentioned before you don't want to basically wiggle this mold back and forth on the sprue what that's gonna do is cause the hook to wiggle loose from the lead head and so you want to use some sort of wire cutter or sprue cutter and then use a little file and be careful and file that down. But use a sprue cutter. This is the only mold that I personally use a sprue cutter because it doesn't get it near as clean and it takes a little bit more filing. But if you don't use one on this, you're gonna regret it because you're gonna have a lot of wiggly hooks. Number five, and then I'm gonna use an old metal file and basically just file that down until it's flat with the head. Because it is a modified mold, it's not perfect. Take a small pair of wire snips and snip that off as well. Take that file, kind of rub it in there to get that out. But that's just about as good as you're going to get for a modified mold Ned head. And that thing is perfect. And that's what they look like without paint ready to go. Five little soldiers standing in a row. Now one thing I would recommend is powder coating these or putting paint on these. That's going to help all of these little nooks and crannies in here get filled with paint. It's going to really give you guys the best jig head possible that will last the longest. The reason for that, you won't have any bending or flexing on your bait keeper. Your hook won't flex or bend away from your little lead head right there. So powder coating these is going to make these last a lot longer for you. Um, but for now, that is what that jig head looks like. Filed down, poured, and ready to go. And you got five little net heads. Quarter ounce, standing in a row right there. So there's our little Ned swimmers hanging out in there. I'm gonna pluck one off of here and pair him up with one of our perfect Neds. This is gonna catch so many giant fish, smallmouth, largemouth, but for me, this is a smallmouth slayer on the Great Lakes, on those rivers, crawfish, gobies, perch eaters. This thing is absolutely going to slay so that's how you do it. That's how it's done. That's how you make the perfect mango magic little Ned Rigs and Ned Rig head with that Gamagatsu 111 hook, a little bit of amber coloring, watermelon brown, some purple and gold flake, and that's going to be a giant smallmouth slayer. What I want to do for you guys, because you are watching the very first video on this channel, I'm going to be giving away eight of these Ned Rig baits and these five hooks that I just poured right here. I'm going to also paint these with some green pumpkin powder paint so that way you guys have a perfect net rig set i'm going to be giving these away all you have to do to enter is go down there in that comment section leave me a comment on what you guys want to see next what colors do you want to see me try and match what do you want to see me do do you want to see me start to break into my dual injecting what do you guys want to see me do on this channel that's all you have to do go down there leave a comment i would appreciate it if you share the video tell your friends about the channel because this is a brand new channel we're going to be growing from the start making awesome little baits like this Ned Rig here, as well as doing some color matching, some more lure pouring, and maybe, maybe down the road, I'm gonna get my buddy Ron to teach me how to airbrush, but that's gonna be a long ways out. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. You guys enjoyed learning how to make an awesome Mango Magic Ned Rig, and the Ned Rig head that I like to pour with this bait. If there's any questions or comments, let me know in the comment section below. I'm probably assuming that most of you guys are not subscribed already since we have about 65 subscribers at the time that I'm filming this video. And I want to say thank you guys for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. As always, maybe we'll come up with a different slogan. But for now, take care, tight lines. God bless. Pursue passion.